Next up, we've got Gulfport Energy, uh, and they're going to talk about kind of a theme that we've seen a little, bit on, a little bit already today, but how to configure business solutions and what they're doing at Gulfport uh, to, uh, to configure solutions to provide back to the business. So we've got Mark James here. Mark, you ready to roll? I'm ready. All righty. Mark's going to take it over and show you what they're working on. Thank you, Adam. My name is Mark James, and I'm the GIS manager at Gulfport Energy. Gulfport Energy utilizes GIS technology across the entire organization. Maps and spatial data are accessed using common tools such as desktop web browsers, smartphones, and even Microsoft Excel. These are essential resources for our uh, business users and decision makers. Recently, GIS technology in Gulfport has become recognized as a critical component to maximizing operational efficiencies and reducing costs. During a tough economic climate, cost reduction strategies are important not only for maintaining investor confidence, but ensuring that we are well poised for rapid growth once commodity prices recover. A strong commitment to environmental leadership influences every decision, and any cost-saving measures must fall within the guidelines of that commitment. Gulfport's freshwater discharge program is one recent example of where potential cost savings have been identified. Trucking stormwater runoff from pad sites is a very costly method, but if the water is proven safe, then significant savings can be realized by controlled release of the water into the environment. In order to safely discharge stormwater, sump inspections are required when half an inch of rain falls within a 24-hour period, or we inspect them at least once every quarter. Water quality experts within Gulfport are not staffed sufficiently to monitor the nearly 270 pad sites we currently have in the Utica Play. So the project requires utilizing resources that are already on site. For example, drilling, completions, and production personnel, as well as utilizing the same technology they're already accustomed to using, namely smartphones. Leveraging in-house technology that can be configured to meet the project needs, rather than customizing a solution, reduces our overall maintenance of the program and ultimately provides additional cost savings. The ArcGIS platform was selected as a solution due to previous success with Collector for ArcGIS projects. The platform provides secure access, multi-device support, and seamless data transfer, delivering data in real time to our corporate web maps. Since we would be using personnel that are not experts in water quality, we needed a form that could provide feedback and instructions when inspections failed. Paper forms can provide this information, but a manual data collection method, this manual data collection method would prove to be a data management nightmare. Survey123 was ultimately selected as the data collection application. It's a form-driven data collection app, meaning the design and usability of the form uh, to display notifications or ask additional questions um, uh, determines the design of the data. This is an important distinction from Collector. The smart form capability allows us to design requirements and calculations into the form. So let's take a look at the form. In Survey123, a user may have a variety of forms that they can choose from. In this case, we just have our uh, sump inspection form. From here, we can start to collect data, or if we've already collected uh, forms in the past, you'd have an opportunity to review those, uh, as well as see as any forms that are still outstanding for submission. We're going to collect a new form. Um, some general information about the pad is requested. Select the pad, select the current well activity. And now from here, we're going to see our first question that will provide additional feedback based on the answer that's selected. Uh, a review of the erosion and sedimentation controls and whether they need to be addressed for repair. If I select no, I see an uh, immediate notification saying I need to call somebody for repair. Uh, if I continue on with the form, uh, we come down to date and time fields, and we see that we can auto-calculate those with the current date and the current time. Uh, we can accept those as they are, or we can edit those. Um, and then we can also add additional notes or instructions to provide reminders to the user on how to uh, use the form. They can open those, review those instructions, close them back up. Um, there are anywhere from one to four sumps on a pad site. Each pump needs to be inspected every 30 minutes once discharging has begun. And if any sump fails on inspection, then the sump needs to be closed and dispatch called immediately. With Survey123, you can set up a repeat section. 
to ask the same series of questions over and over as many times as the user may need. So let's do that now. So again, we can select a current time. And as you see, even though this one isn't auto-calculated, it still recognizes the current time that we're in. And I can change that as necessary, select the current sum that I'm located at. And now here's where the form gets a little bit more interesting. This question asks the, user, the inspector to notify whether there's any visible concerns with the water. If I select no, I, I can continue on the form at, with the form as normal. But if I select yes, again, notification pops up. I need to notify dispatch. But I'm also asked to, uh, to show what issues I'm seeing. And I, we can even provide images inside the app as examples of what they may be looking for. So I can select a few of these. I'm also required to take a photo. And then continue on with the form. Again, we're asking the inspector to enter the current chloride level. Um, and if I enter an, a value that's acceptable, I uh, am allowed to continue with the form. But if I enter something that is outside of the range, again, I'm notified that I need to take further action. So let's continue. Uh, pH range, um, again, same, same concept. And at this point, uh, the user can continue selecting new uh, inspections as they move around the site to the various sumps. Um, with each one of these inspections, or inside this repeat section, they're all related back to the original feature class. And the, the information that the inspector is required to enter for the pad is not required for each subsequent inspection. I simply create a plus. Uh, it, tap the plus, and then I'm only, I only need to enter the information for each uh, sump inspection. Uh, what's important to note with these sump inspections is that uh, we monitor these uh, with GeoEvent server. So when a uh, sump inspection is uh, uh, entered into ArcGIS Online, GeoEvent reads that information, and any of the failed inspections that may come through will be sent out as email notifications to additional staff for further review. So once I'm done completing sump inspections, I can finish out the form, take additional photos, add some additional comments, and then we can re require a signature of the inspector. I can save that, send it later. Um, and from there, there are many factors that go into making this project a success. Oversight by the EHS department, well-coordinated workflows among various operational groups, environmental concerns, the current well pad activity, and so on. Without the use of this GX, GIS technology, the realization of a first-year cost reduction of at least $2 million, which will certainly grow as more pads are constructed and transportation costs would increase, this would not be possible. If you'd like to hear more about our project, please attend our user session tomorrow morning on using Esri Mobile Solutions for field data integration and management. Thank you. Hey, Mark, thanks. I, I do have one question for you. So the forms are pretty impressive. What, what, was that a complicated form to build? What went into building that form? So we, we received a lot of feedback um, from our field staff, and they were actually the ones that guided the design of the form. Um, so we just took really their input into that, and the form creation itself is actually very easy. It's done right inside of Excel, um, and a lot of the same calculations that you might do in a spreadsheet yeah. go right into Survey123. So I'm sure you're going to be talking about that tomorrow, yes, sir. answering lots of questions. Thanks, Mark. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gulfport. <laughs> All right, so continuing that, that theme, uh, a couple concluding thoughts. One, configure first everything about that. Uh, the form looks kind of elaborate, but, you know, we heard it from him. It's, it's all in Excel, in an XLS format, and it's pretty straightforward to build it. But uh, a, a big theme there was maximizing their investments, so having to increase operational efficiencies and going after something that can be usable and provide an immediate impact. So that you heard him talk about how those folks are out doing their job and that they've got this Survey123 form uh, on their phone, and it's just immediately usable, almost zero to, to no training at all. So to con Continue on with that theme. We've got another familiar face here, Mr. Jeff Shaner, who's going to talk 
kind of build upon what Mark did and what Gulfport's doing right now and continuing that with integrated field solutions. You ready to take it? Awesome, thanks. All righty, you got everything you need? Yeah, just All advance right. me one slide maybe. Adam, can you advance me? There we go. So um, as Mark talked about, uh, Gulfport has nearly 270 well pads in the Utica play alone. And um, from a work management perspective, there's a lot going on uh, in their field operations. And uh, they need strong planning, coordination, and constant monitoring of that work that they do. Uh, some inspections from, the from talking with Mark uh, quite a bit about what they've been building uh, are just the tip of the iceberg. They have, as you can see here, a list of additional inspection types that they want to roll out through the course of this year. And that involves a whole bunch of people in the process both employees and contractors uh, to bring that to life. So in our development group, we've been building not only Survey123 and Collector and Navigator, but um, a new product called Workforce for ArcGIS that can tie all that together. And that starts here on my desktop with strong planning that's integrated into the ArcGIS platform. So what you're seeing here is Workforce for ArcGIS. Uh, and we have a list of the different um, assignment types that Gulfport may go out and um, accomplish work for. And you can see a number of them are sump inspections. You can see their location and their priority. So you get this quick glimpse at the assignment work that's uh, capable uh, by, the, by the teams that are out there. You can also tap on the workers tab and take a look at the current workload that uh, is out there. And you can sort that in different ways. I could sort that by their workload. You can see uh, Mr. Dal Hunter has been kind of absent from this plenary so far. He's busy at work, but if you want to give him a call, there's his number right there. Feel free to, to let him know that you miss him today. What we're going to do is uh, I'm going to tap on my location as an EHS specialist that uh, is going to perform one of these sump pump inspections. And this is going to be in, as a result of a uh, of a rain event. You know, Mark mentioned that they either happen quarterly or by a rain event. So I'm just going to pan over from my location to this well pad and tap on it. When I tap on it, I can tap at that location, get the well pad, and create a new assignment directly inside of the Workforce web application. Here are the different types. Uh, I mentioned that there are a number coming online for Mark, uh, but we'll pick sump inspection first. We'll give it a, a nice uh, location name. It doesn't have to be the physical location. It could be um, one that's familiar to the, to the mobile worker. But I'll call it uh, Hancock Pad. I'm going to assign that uh, to myself. I'm going to give it a high priority with the due date of tomorrow. And I can enter some information that's uh, usable in the field. So, a meaningful description. Well, hey, there was a rainwater discharge event. Um, we need to make sure the chloride levels are less than 250 uh, parts per million. And also for that uh, mobile worker, we can attach to the assignment information that helps them get their job done. So I can attach a PDF document about how to do the sump inspection process. So I'm going to attach that and create the assignment. Uh, and that gets a notification over to the mobile worker on uh, their mobile device. So looking at my iPhone, now I've got Workforce as an application uh, running uh, on my mobile device. And it really integrates the field workforce experience. So new assignments can come in, and you'll see them uh, come into the list. Uh, the new one, uh, sump inspections at the top. You can think about it uh, really like your email inbox, right? It's the, it's the different tasks that you have to accomplish during the day. Hopefully, it's not all driven by email, uh, but on my mobile device. And I can organize that information in different ways. So if I want to sort it based upon priority, I can look at uh, what work is important for me to do first rather than later. And I can set my working status. I happen to be in a working state right now. But think of this kind of like your Skype status in that when I um, mark myself as working, now I'm available for work. So it broadcasts my location uh, back to the office. They know that I'm in a working state. I can take new assignments, and I can move on. 
So I'm going to tap on the SUMP inspection um, one that I was actually assigned. And you're going to see the description that was given. I can view the attachment. I can actually download it uh, onto my mobile device and then uh, open it up so I can see the actual process and the tools, perhaps, that I need to use in order to accomplish this um, inspection report. And then I can help uh, get there, because as an EHS specialist, I might not be there on site. I may never have gone to this well pad before. So I can open up Navigator, and it will automatically find directions for me to that well site. And with Navigator, uh, we can navigate not only on commercial roads, but pretty soon with the next release, the 2.0 release, you'll be able to create your own roads and navigate against them. And so we'll just start the Starting navigation to process. Hancock Pad. Go southeast on Ramsey Ridge toward East Captain Highway. Turn left. In 0 0.3 miles, turn right on Irons. In 0 0.2 miles, turn right on Irons. Turn right on Irons. Destination in 120 feet. You have arrived at Hancock Pad. And so Navigator not only gives you turn-by-turn uh, -turn directions against your own private roads that you can name, um, but it gives you that voice guidance and auto uh, reroute as well. And when we get to the destination, it prompts us to return back to the workforce application if you actually tap the right button. Um, so when I'm at that site, I could then start um, my work. And I can press the Start button here, and that actually starts an audit trail for us. So we can know uh, when that mobile worker started their work assignment, when they completed that work assignment, uh, and look back at that in time if we, we'd like. And just like Mark, I can open up uh, Survey123 and start that inspection report. And when I'm completed with the work assignment, I can add some notes if I'd like, finish the work assignment, uh, and then move on to the next. So you can see how workforce on the mobile device brings this integrated experience for not only the work you need to do, how you need to get there, but then also into the other applications that you perform the work with, whether that be Survey123, as we're showing you, or Collector for ArcGIS. So back on my desktop, we can take a look at um, the operation as it's going. Uh, and I've got Operations Dashboard up, and it's showing you uh, multiple panels of information. Uh, one about the field crew utilization. You can see that we have seven crew members actively working and uh, how many are on break or perhaps offline. We can look at their assignment status, how many assignments have been completed, how are we trending as far as our service level agreements. Um, and we can find information about the, um, the actual uh, pads themselves. So we've got, uh, as Mark was talking about, wiring up rain gauges. We can look at uh, the weather information, which pad sites need to be inspected, haven't been inspected, which are um, restricted pads versus um, pads that you don't need to worry about so, so much. Uh, and all of the SUMP inspection reports that have been done. So it gives you this situational awareness um, as the operation is taking place. So hopefully that shows you how um, Gulfport is evolving their field operations. And um, Mark is looking at how they can put together these additional inspection types as well as uh, bring forward um, workforce and operations dashboard in, in the overall management of it. Adam? Thank you, yeah, Jeff. Thank you. So a couple things to tie those two together. That was kind of a two-part presentation between Gulfport and what Jeff showed. So one, again, configurable platform solutions is kind of being seen over and over again here. Um, but also Esri's commitment to building relevant applications. So we, we continue to develop relevant apps that our users can take, use, deploy, uh, and hopefully provide that immediate impact.